had for a very long time, and it has to do with this map. This is a map of the eight. Wait, did I run the ad? I literally forgot to run the ad at the top of the hour. It's been nine minutes. Here's the ad now. 18 states in the US where Democrats control the legislative and executive branches or else have some veto-proof majority I in gotta the legislature. Pee, I'll be back. Democrats in DC often blame the GOP for foiling their progressive vision. When middle-class families see their taxes go up, they'll know Republicans are to blame. But if you zoom into these 18 states, there's effectively no Republicans standing in the way. So my question is, what do Democrats actually do when they have all the power? To answer this question, I teamed up with the Times editorial board writer, Binya Applebaum. Okay, you got my attention. He's been thinking about and writing books about and reporting on this topic for decades. I think, you know, Americans tend to view politics as a competition of us versus them. And, and they tend to think that if they would just get out of the way, then we can do the things that we want to do. There is no them standing in the way. There's just the we of Democrats and their supporters, and they get to decide what policy should look like in those states. And that is an opportunity for them to implement their vision. For this story, I also delved into this giant document. It is the 2020 Democratic Party platform. If you wanna really understand what Democrats say they want, what their vision is for America, it's found inside of this document. This document serves as a guide as we zoom into these states to answer this question. What do Democrats really do when they have all the power? Nearly 554,000 homeless people from the 25 wealthiest Americans shows they're paying little in income taxes compared to their fortunes, sometimes nothing at all. We cannot in good faith blame the Republicans. I love this, by the way. This is like, you know, Johnny CIA Harris is spitting right now, okay? Straight up. I love that. I love that he's like shitting on lips on the New York Times. Republican Party when House Democrats have a majority. There's still very intense segregation happening in all kinds of forms all over this country. Okay, so let's start with California. To me, California is like the quintessential liberal state. From the state legislature to the whole executive branch to most of the big cities, Dems hold majority control. So what do they do with all this power? Looking at California, you have to look at housing. Okay, now wait, listen. When I hear the words housing policy, I tend to sort of doze off. But Binya insists that housing policy and what is happening in California is definitely worth looking at. You cannot say that you... This is, uh... This is the guy who took down Pete Buttigieg. ...or against inequality in America unless you are willing to have affordable housing built in your neighborhood. And Democrats completely agree here in this document. The word... What do you have to say about, it says here that you fixed bread prices in Canada. <laughs> uh, you've worked for a company that fixed bread prices in Canada. <laughs> um, are these guys leftists or conservatives? I can't tell. Wait, what? No, they're not leftists. Housing is mentioned over a hundred times. The neighborhood where you're born has a huge influence on the rest of your life. Children who are- I, I'm gonna- I suspect that you're gonna get some Yimby shit that is still like exclusively uh, uh, about- not necessarily about like affordable housing, even though he did mention affordable housing, but like more often than not, the only thing that we see, more often than not, the only thing that we see from liberals at best is like, you know, straight up uh, Yimby shit that revolves around like build whatever you can, build whatever you can and, you know, affordable housing because your supply is up will inevitably, um, will, will raise the supply and then, you know, obviously uh, supply and demand, uh, that means that uh, prices will go down. But that is not the end all be all solution for affordable housing. If you are an advocate for affordable housing, I, I'm, I'm on your side. You are born in neighborhoods with degraded environmental conditions, with a lack of access to high quality public services, poor schools, poor public transit, are at a permanent disadvantage. And they even say verbatim, housing in America should be stable, accessible, safe, healthy, energy efficient, and above all, affordable. Housing is a human right. Housing is a human right. The rent is going through the roof. 
Housing is a human right. How does it's California too damn high. do when it comes to housing? You know where those signs are when you drive into a state that says, welcome to California? They might as well replace them with signs that say, keep out. Because in California, the cost of housing is so high that for many people, it's simply unaffordable. The, the state has simply, for the most part, stopped building housing. I mean, there are cranes, there's housing going up, but it has slowed down over time really, really sharply and it is nowhere near sufficient to keep pace with California's population. And so what you have is, is not enough housing and too many people trying to get it. And the inevitable result is that prices have gone up, up and away. The median price of a home in San Diego County. Do you find the difference between Yimby and NIMBY? Yimby seems to be correct position, but I'm not informed on it. It depends. There's like different kinds of it, but there's like neoliberal Yimby's and then there's uh, leftist Yimby's. Yimby means yes in my backyard. Nimby means no in my, not in my backyard. Okay. A lot of times NIMBYs are just like rich people. The, the people that don't want additional development in their neighborhood, because that will one, make it like shitty for them while the uh, buildings are being constructed. And two, because that will lower their property value. So they don't want that. They care about their house as a, as an investment vehicle and they want to protect that investment vehicle. So they do everything they possibly can to stop any sort of new developments from happening in their neighborhoods. Yimbies, on the other hand, are uh, yes in my backyarders. The neoliberal ones want to build houses no matter what, okay? They're like, we need to engage in urban sprawl. We need to make sure that we have uh, very little regulation revolving around like what kind of new housing can be built. Doesn't matter how it looks. It doesn't matter if we're building ugly ass concrete towers uh, that will remain empty and will be another investment vehicle for like some uh, Saudi royalty or whatever that will remain empty. Ultimately, that will still lower the housing uh, prices because there's just more housing available. I'm somewhere in between, Boy, I do believe that there should be no, uh, there should be more housing in the state of California, but the reality is that because affordable housing is one of the main reasons, the lack of availability of affordable housing is one of the main reasons why people get priced out of the housing market and become homeless. So I am certainly an advocate for more housing. I don't give a f uh, build more housing no matter what, but stop building like luxury high rises and actually build housing that at the very least, even if you're going to build a luxury high rise, make sure that a significant chunk of that is still occupied by affordable units. And that is a form of regulation that a lot of neoliberal uh, Yimbis do not want. Well, that's actually go going to stop people from building new houses because blah, 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 blah. Because like, well, then it's like the developer is not making money. Aren't there NIMBYs that are NIMBYs because of gentrification or am I wrong? I, I don't know. I, I don't. Oh, so you're a MIMBY maybe in my backyard? No, I'm not. They've built four new buildings around me in Hollywood and all of them are luxury and mostly empty. Yeah. Culver City is a great example of this, right? They're building at the edge of Culver City right now. And all of those new places are all lofts. Like they're luxury lofts. And it's not even remotely, like remotely affordable. It's such bullshit. It's such dog shit. Okay. Uh, California just passed SB9, the single family zoning law. Yes. In the state of California, a 6,000 square feet lot was the minimum lot that you can have. It was the lot size for every single family house. Uh, they just removed that restriction. So now you can cut your lot up into two and like allow another house to be built on it or a townhouse or even an apartment. So uh, Yimbys hate single family housing. Look at that. They're, they're throwing up right now. It's crazy in some of those. Yep, this is true. I learned this from my mom, actually. This is kind of what she does. Uh, or she studies this and, and teaches people this. But uh, some of the houses in luxury high rises with low income housing have a separate entrance and a separate elevator for the poor in New York City, for example. And of course, the supply of those low income housing is incredibly difficult to get. You have to literally win the lottery, okay, to be able to even have access to, to get into one of those low income homes. And when you do, you can't use the regular door. You got to use the poor door. Um, in Brooklyn, there's a lot of pushback for new developments because people are trying to build apartment buildings that require a higher annual salary than the average salary of the neighborhood. So yes, there are technically NIMBYs for gentrification in Brooklyn. Gentrification from Brooklyn, I guess at this stage means gentrifying the podcasters out of Brooklyn that already gentrified Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Split elevators and doors are my uncle's idea and doesn't see an issue with it. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, the housing is given out before the building is made, even made usually. Yep. They also put units next to elevators or stairwells where there's more foot traffic noise. We are such gross creatures. It's honestly embarrassing. Oh, absolutely. <coughs> um, I live in San Diego. My boyfriend and I bought a condo for 329000 Someone bought the unit below for 389000 
Threw some white paint and trendy shit inside and sold after owning it for two weeks for 500k. It's a two bedroom, two bathroom, 900 ish square feet. The housing market is so unbelievably f that I'm pretty sure it got sold to a landlord instead of a family. Of course it did. I like those Vienna apartments you showed a little bit ago with cases piling up and eviction crisis unfolds step by step. Oh, hell yeah. No, I am not a fan of brutalism and you know this already. And that's uh, besides the point. We're not going to argue on that. Low income home segregation and luxury high rises are huge in Vancouver as well. Poor people have separate doors, hallways, and elevators and staircases. Should housing be subsidized? I think housing, housing should be free for those who need it. I'm an advocate for, for a housing first approach to the homelessness crisis. And I'm also an advocate for, of course, social housing. Ethan Sawyer tweet about spaces. Is Big Bird a communist? Oh my God. I work for an affordable housing development company and the industry is extremely complex due to financing, financing structure and legislation. Um, so here they have raffles and lotteries for housing to choose who gets to overspend on a house. Similar pricing out thing happening in St. Petersburg, Florida. People are given 30 days notice to move out. Yeah. I mean, there are many different ways of making it. Uh, there are many different ways of uh, addressing the crises, but nearly all of them revolve around making it less affordable to use houses as an investment vehicle. Okay. Which I am a gigantic advocate of. You understand? I do not believe that you should be able to use your home as an investment vehicle. Okay. You should be able to use your home in the way that God intended it to be used, which is housing, shelter, a roof over your head. Okay. But in America, it is the number one, like it, it's seen as like the number one American dream. Thank you for that, by the way. It is seen as the number one way of, you know, uh, uh, creating intergenerational wealth. And it's true. It's really f***ed up. All right, let's keep going. Money is now a staggering $830,000. All around California, there are cities full of people who say that they are progressive, they're liberals. They believe in a more equal America, a more diverse America. They show up to the marches, they put in the lawn signs about everyone being equal, but at the same time, they're actively fighting to keep their neighborhoods looking like this. Okay, wait, but that doesn't look so bad. It's just a bunch of houses in a neighborhood, right? No, it turns out that this is actually the result of specific policies, intentional policies that keeps these neighborhoods spread out and full of single family homes, as opposed to higher density buildings like duplexes or apartment complexes. This is a real serious fight and you can get a glimpse into it by looking at a zoning map. Yes, we're looking at a municipal zoning map of Palo Alto, California. Don't leave yet, this is really where it sinks in, so just stick around. So everything on this map that is yellow is zoned for single family homes like this and this. One family can live here. But here in Palo Alto, there are a lot of new jobs. This is a desirable place to live for new opportunities. Over the past eight years, the San Francisco area has added 676,000 jobs, but only 176,000 housing units. So a few years ago, the city council voted to change the zoning of one section of the city right here. Specifically this two acre plot of land. They wanted to change it from low density housing to higher density housing so that they could build a 60 unit affordable housing complex for elderly members of the community. Okay, so they changed the zoning. Start building the 60 unit complex. No, the overwhelmingly liberal residents of Palo Alto decided to hold a vote to overturn the decision to revert it back to low density single family housing. Oh, wow. Shocked. Shocked to find out that liberals, when it comes down to their own pocketbooks, are just as reactionary because liberalism is still inherently reactionary because it revolves around, uh, you know, private property, not personal property. Homes. Homes are a personal property. Private property is when you use your home or utilize your home as an investment vehicle, wanted to protect their investments. Back to yellow. And it passed and the zoning was overturned. So now when you go to this plot of land, instead of an affordable housing complex for the elderly, what you're gonna see is this a row of just a few houses, all of them massive and worth around $5 million each. Nice. I think people aren't living their values. You go to these meetings in these neighborhoods where they're talking about a new housing project and it's always the same song. And it goes like this. I am very in favor of affordable housing. We need more of it in this community. However, I have some concerns about this project. We have the hearts to do this, but we're doing it wrong and we're dictating 
and harm onto the neighborhoods. And then off we go with the concerns and then nothing ever gets built. This is happening all over California. And the result is that these neighborhoods so 2.7 is pretty affordable then? <laughs> yeah, I mean, depending on where you live, yes. My house is, what was really funny is for its size and its neighborhood, my house is literally cheaper than like most other houses in this neighborhood. Not cheaper overall, but cheaper price per square feet, which is why whenever people were like, why don't you buy this million dollar mansion instead? It was like, well, that's literally more expensive. Like people would literally, when I bought the house, when people were like, huh, you should have bought this house instead. They straight up were showing houses that were more expensive overall per square feet. It's okay. Stop LARPing as a poor dude. I've literally never LARPed as a poor person. Okay. I'm, I make more money than your dad and your grandfather combined. Okay. That's how the system is. You understand? I am not LARPing as a poor person. I have never LARPed as a poor person. Okay. It's so insanely stupid. And guess what? Whenever you say shit like that, people are like, you know what? I like this guy's content. I'm going to give him more subscriptions. It's literally what happens. Anytime some dumbass comes in here and is like, oh, why aren't you lopping as a poor person? You know what it is. You know what the deal is. If you like it and you think it's worth $5 a month, or if you want to use your Twitch Prime here, go off Kings. That's it. Leftism is not about being poor. Leftism is not about, thank you, trustless eyes. Every single time. This is so scummy in Culver City. One of the big opponents of zoning change is literally a real estate attorney trying to act like he's against it for liberal and moral reasons. Yeah, of course. Thank you, God's third leg for the 10 gifted subs. Thank you, Super Mood Kit for the five gifted subs. Thank you, Anonymous Gifter. There you go. Good job. Thank you, uh, Chatter. You did that. ...are so expensive that they keep anyone out who isn't a part of this small group of super rich residents, many of whom bought their properties decades ago and who spend their time fighting vigorously to keep the value Thank you, of ben their Fish real estate for the assets the super high. If you want to keep Palo Alto the kind of neighborhood and community that we all treasure... What's funny is you broke 50k subs because of the house scandal. Yeah, I had 55,000 subs after the house scandal. And then because I didn't stream as much as I normally stream... My sub count uh, went down a lot, like by almost 10,000 subs. And I saw mother on Twitter being like, dude, everybody found out you were rich and that's why they stopped giving you subs. Like you've been out and it's like, no dickhead. It's because I don't stream as much. I didn't stream as much because I was getting literally uh, endlessly owned. And it, it got to a point where it was like starting to hurt my soul. I just hate that. Like, I, I hate hearing nonstop about how much of a scumbag I am despite the fact that I believe in the same values and advocate for the same things that I have been advocating for, for the longest goddamn time. It like literally sucks. It sucks so much. Okay. Low intensity, low density. Acting like 40K subs isn't a lot still. Yeah, and literally that's the other thing. Safe for kids to walk to school. You've got to vote against Measure D. There's a, an aspect of sort of, of greed here and, and of, uh, you know, nervousness about actually sharing those opportunities. Let's go to another liberal bastion up here in Washington state. The Democratic Party talks about taxation, saying that our tax code has been, quote, rigged against the American people. Democrats all the time are decrying the fact that tax- For the record, the NIMBYs in this situation, the people who don't want to build it, are pieces of sh especially because this is affordable housing for old people, okay? You are literally an immoral. If you have an opportunity to build affordable housing in your neighborhood for old people and you decide, nah, f that. Oh, it'll make the place like w less safe. No, you're a piece of shit, okay? I just want to say this with my entire chest so you guys understand. Like, make no mistake. That's bullshit, okay? Tax cuts are going to the wealthiest Americans. It is time for a wealth tax in America. Democrats believe in a progressive tax system where the rich pay a larger share of their income than the poor. This is like the most basic policy vision of like a progressive movement. It's front and center in Democrats' policy platform. They don't want to live near those old folk ghettos. Exactly. Yeah, them old folk, man. They're 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 bringing in crime. They're you know they're 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 just bad. They're just bad. All those old people. I mean, think about it. Why are you trending? Am I trending again? What happened this time? But if you go and look at Washington state, what you find is that in Washington state, if you look at the, the state and local taxes that people pay there, less affluent families pay a much larger share of their income in taxes than the wealthiest residents of Washington state. So people like Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, two of the state's most famous and wealthy residents, are in this lovely situation of, of paying less in taxes as a share of their income 
than, than the poor people who live in that same state. And this is a fundamental inversion of the values that the Democratic Party professes. There is no state with a more regressive system of taxation than Washington state. And I'm talking like the most regressive, meaning Texas, which is like the conservative bastion of like anti-taxes, is more progressive than Washington state, liberal Washington state. How is that real? Oh, and guess what? Other states on our map also are in the top 10 of most regressive tax regimes like Nevada and Illinois. There have been some changes, particularly in recent years, but the overall situation remains resistant to change. So I'm very concerned that at this time, which is a very poor time to disincent people from creating jobs in Washington state, that we're even considering it. From that paycheck that you earn, more of that money is going to state government. And so the effect of that is basically to exacerbate inequality. Okay, so Rich Liber The person who said Louisiana isn't the most regressive state, let's go. Dude, don't kid yourself, okay? Louisiana literally has some of the wealthiest and poorest people living in the same goddamn zip code, okay? It's literally the worst state in by every metric. It is so resource rich, it's a poor state. And even then, the way that Louisiana treats its own citizens is so disgusting to me. These places are literally safe havens in comparison to Louisiana, okay? Be real for a second. It's literally like it, it is literally worse. It's worse than most of these liberal states, but these liberal states are still being hypocritical. That's the reality. The reality is that like liberal states and, and, and blue neighborhoods are being deeply hypocritical because they care more about their investment vehicles being protected, okay, uh, than, than they care about like, you know, actually following the principles of housing being a human right. Liberals don't show up when it comes to housing or taxes. Another major theme in this policy document is education. And the wording in here I find quite interesting. The Democrats say, quote, we must provide world-class education in every zip code to every child because education is a critical public good. They use this word zip code to represent the fact. They're using the word regressive and progressive in a technical tax way, not in a colloquial progressive a political way yet. Yeah, no shit. Yes, a progressive tax rate is when the rich have a larger burden on taxes. Uh, a regressive tax rate is like uh, having, for example, the sales tax, which impacts the working poor more. A sales tax is regressive. A uh, increasing marginal, uh, uh, like top marginal tax rate uh, based on your income is progressive. That in America, schools get their funding based on the real estate taxes of the houses within that school district. The more this is one of the most dog shit ways of like, uh, by the way, this is racist as fuck too. For the record, housing is so profoundly important for the American identity. Understanding like the history of housing in this country will help you unlock the mysterious ways in which American developers and like the American local governments have routinely and consistently over black people and brown people and immigrants okay it literally directly impacts your education think about it this way you're a black person living in the south side of chicago okay you work every goddamn day barely making ends meet you send your child to your school system underfunded uh crippling okay money is not coming in from the state government money is not coming in enough from the taxes because ultimately there is, it's not a rich neighborhood. It's not a wealthy neighborhood. Where are your taxes going? Well, your taxes, a big chunk of it rather, is going to pay the salaries of cops or give them new toys, for example. Some of those new toys they will use on you and your children, by the way. But before we even get to that point, a lot of your money is going back to the cops. Well, where are the cops living? Not in your neighborhood. They're living in one of those edge cities, okay? They're living in one of those safe haven towns that are deep red, living at the precipice of the goddamn city. All of a sudden, they're living in a nice neighborhood. They're living in a wealthier neighborhood because they're making $120,000 a year with your taxes. So as a black person in America, you have historically been priced out of the housing market. You have had literally, like, you've had cities built around you on purpose, deliberately pushed out uh, and, and unable to, even if you have the money for it, unable to buy into neighborhoods where white people live, rich neighborhoods where white people live. And then ultimately on top of that, you've been kept down, kept down historically. And then the dollars, the little crumbs that you make, it doesn't even go back to your education. A big chunk of that literally goes to the paying the hog cop that probably ruthlessly occupies your neighborhood so that he can go back 
and buy a nice house in Naperville, okay? And then that neighborhood is going to have better education as a consequence of that because they're paying higher taxes because they're just wealthier in general. That's how this shit works. It's insane, dude. It is so deeply unjust. The more expensive the neighborhood, the more funding goes to the school. So over here in Illinois, which is like the quintessential- Naperville is in Chicago. Mount Greenwood is a better example. Yeah, I couldn't. I always love Duncan on Naperville, but it's not Naperville. Naperville is like upper- upper middle class and rich kids that say they're from Chicago. I don't know what the specific Haven community is. Uh, what do they call it? They, what is it called when you, uh, it's called, it's like, it's like an edge city or something. What do they call them? Like a, a, it's like a suburb, but basically there's a, there's a specific term for it. Not redlining. I'm saying like, it's basically a suburb that's on the edge of the city where all the cops live. Like LAPD, for example, those mother don't live in Los Angeles. They don't live in the neighborhoods that they they actually uh, uh, work in. Okay, they're they're literally living in some red neighborhood uh, in the valley or like a satellite city. Exactly, they're living in an enclave satellite uh, city. Okay, in the outskirts of the actual city that they're supposed to be protecting and serving. They don't have an interest in protecting and serving that city. They're just making money. They are basically operating as an occupying force especially in black and brown neighborhoods their entire job is to fucking protect the interests of capital and uh you know they they go back and pump their own suburbs full of the funds that are necessary with the same dollars that you yourself are paying uh the, the salaries that you are giving them so they can come back and beat the shit out of you it is so fucked up central liberal state there's this one county that contains the city of chicago it's called cook county the residents here voted overwhelmingly for democratic candidates in the presidential and senatorial elections last year often what would happen is that this it's like the worst pieces of shit i don't have a problem with jb pritzker because he's a big boy and i love him but like dick durbin is such a scumbag dude i well hate him i mean listen illinois politicians are like literal demons okay you have to be like People think Travis Scott is like working with Satan, but Dick Durbin is literally Satan, okay? Anyway. Democratic candidates in the presidential and senatorial elections last year. Often what would happen is that this would just be one big school district and that all the taxes from all the towns in this county would be put into one bucket and distributed equally throughout the county. But the residents of this very blue democratic county have actually decided to divide themselves into more than 140 school districts. What? So now you have all these tiny school districts. The Chicago public school system is, uh, I think it, it, it counts for like 90% of the students, but only gets 70% of the funds, by the way, in the entirety of Illinois. Uh, also, the nearly every single black and brown student living in the state of Illinois are in the Chicago public school system. Like literally almost every single one. It's like 90... 5% or 96% or some shit like that. It's nuts. Districts like this one, which are like gerrymandered around the richest part of town. And so all of the taxes from these rich homeowners go into one little bucket and then only get distributed to the schools within this rich region of the county. It can be on the same block that runs through the middle of it. And if you live on one side of that line, you're consigned to an inferior education by virtue of the fact that you and your neighbors don't have as much money. And if you live on the other side, you're basically a member of a club that is sponsoring a private school, essentially, for the benefit of that small group of kids who are lucky enough to live in that affluent community. Yep. And the result- This is why in the United States of America, your zip code that you're born into and that you lived in is a better determining factor than anything else on like what income level you're gonna land at ultimately as an adult. Is that poor communities have less money to educate their children and rich communities have more money to educate their children. This is crazy. It means basically that the kids who have the greatest needs have the fewest resources. The same thing is happening in wealthy liberal Connecticut, where the inequality in education opportunities is shameful, with some schools having huge budgets for their libraries and facilities. Zip code because color of your skin, your zip code determines the color of your skin too. And others. Like your color of your skin is, is very easily identifiable by your zip code too in the same state having to use duct tape to keep wind and snow out of their windows. Like this is a real thing. We need your help in establishing guidelines, procedures, and funding to address issues negatively impacting our students like extreme temperatures, mold, lead exposure, and poor water and air quality. So yeah, Binya tells me that the state- Oh, also, 
one of the most beautiful parts about this is that there is a gigantic disparity in education as we just found out because of the way that like zoning laws and because of the well, not zoning laws but because of the way that uh like uh, uh property taxes are divvied out just in these specific neighborhoods rather than uh, go across the board to the entirety of the uh, Chicago public school system and also all the exurbs and suburbs or whatever they call it. But here's another issue. Republicans and Democrats look at that problem and go, well, you know what the issue is? It's called school choice. You can't go to the school in your neighborhood or you can't go to the school in the fancy neighborhood. But what do they do? Instead of reappropriating funds and reallocating funds based on need, they literally gut the public school system so that they can create what is known as charter schools. Democrats love charter schools. Republicans love charter schools and private schools, and they hate public schools. Both of them actively and deliberately work against the public school system, which is the whole problem to begin with. You should be fighting to push for better, adequate funding for public schools, not the other way around. Shouts out to Bill Gates, as not your average African points out. Exactly. So both liberals and conservatives both go over the public school system, and that creates a, an even less fortunate situation for schools in, in desolate conditions in poorer, predominantly black and brown neighborhoods, because now they don't even get the crumbs because the crumbs that they were supposed to get are now being allocated to fund a private school. A charter school that is going to give off a couple vouchers, okay, at the end of the day. Of course, they don't have to have unionized labor either, by the way. They don't have to have teachers unions. They don't have to even abide by the same common core curriculum either. All of a sudden, they can do whatever the f they want. A lot of those charter schools end up failing. When they end up failing, your kid doesn't have a school to even go to. And there is no accountability. And the reason for why there's no accountability is because that's precisely how the Democrats and the Republicans want to over. This is how it works, right boys. States could change this. They could actually just collect all the real estate taxes and then equally distribute them. But if you look at some of our liberal strongholds, that is exactly what they are not doing. Let me be clear about something. In blue states, progress is being made, albeit slowly. For instance, a few weeks ago, California finally passed a law I gotta run, I'll be back in a of single-family zoning. It's a small step in the right direction. And in many cases, blue states provide more and better public services and historically have given better chances to low-income families to climb the economic ladder. But for some of these foundational democratic values of housing equality, progressive taxation, and education equality, Democrats don't actually embody their values very well. We're talking, once again, about a system that's been rigged. Republicans today are to blame. What we're talking about here is that blue states are the problem. Blue states are where the housing crisis is located. Blue states are where the disparities in education funding are the most dramatic. Blue states are the places where tens of thousands of homeless people are living on the streets. Blue states are the places where economic inequality is increasing most quickly in this country. This is not a problem of, of not doing well enough. It is, it is a situation where the blue states are the problem. Affluent liberals tend to be really good at showing up to the marches and talking about how they love equality. They're really good at putting signs in their lawn saying that all are welcome here. But by their actions, what they're actually saying is, yes, we believe in this idea. Okay. It's not a blue-red problem, okay? Those places end up becoming blue because they're urban centers. Urban centers are environments that are very diverse. In a diverse environment, especially in a highly competitive diverse environment, you're going to have a lot of highly educated people. Highly educated people tend to be liberal. That is a chicken or the egg situation where the chicken is after the egg, okay? So it is a problem that the Democrats are exacerbating. Certainly, it is a problem of the market conditions. It is a, uh, it, and it needs to, it needs reprisal, it needs addressing, and it needs solutions. And Democrats are not solving them, okay? That is 100% true. But to say that this is like, oh, it's like liberals are f***ing everybody over. It's like, well, that's idiotic. There's a reason for why that's happening. It's like there was a reason why Austin is liberal, okay? And now it has a homelessness problem. Why? Well, it's because it became liberal when it became a center for industry, for tech. And then it started becoming more and more liberal. And, uh, and more people started living there. And it became more liberal. And all of a sudden, when more people live there, the housing, pr uh, the housing market has been going bananas. It's now unaffordable to be able to purchase a home in Austin. It's unaffordable to even rent in Austin. Boom. Homeless people are created as a consequence of being priced out of the housing market. That's just how it works. 
which is like a weirdly debate lord yeah it's a weirdly debate lord way of looking at it because like it's almost like you care more about the perceived hypocrisy of liberals which really is a fucking issue rather than like admit that the republicans are also doing their very best to destroy this uh system but because they openly say that they have disdain for the poor that like that's somehow all right and that really frustrates me this is what debate lords do all the time it's like i'm gonna hyper focus on someone who is like uh you know claiming that they want to do progress but they're not actually doing progress rather than the person who's literally like i want to melt poor people into biomatter because that person is at least living their own you know moral system or whatever it's like no the both are bad you could say both are bad you should say both are bad Ugh. feels just not in my backyard we are not living our values people who live in blue states people who profess liberal values you need to look in the mirror and, and need to understand that they are not taking the actions that are consistent with those values not just incidentally thank not you, just Rowie, in small areas but the that five, some of the most thank important you, the policy choices we are denying people the thank opportunity thank you dominic Twu, for the thank you for the subs to prosper and to thrive and to build better lives and it is happening in places where democrats control the levers of policy look in the mirror also created because of drugs and liberals <laughs> hey if you like this video please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos <laughs>